Welcome to English Practice Stories. I'm a 50-year-old housewife, living with my son and daughter in their 20s. Young people may think it's strange. But for a long while, my dream was to become a full-time housewife to make a happy family. One may question. Why? I didn't want to develop myself in society, and instead wanting to just settle for being a full-time housewife. But I longed to have a happy family. The most my unhappy upbringing played a large part in this. I was born into an unhappy family as the eldest daughter. My father was a taxi driver. But he was more interested in playing than working. My mother scoffed at him as the worthless. She had to earn a living instead of my father. She worked as a babysitter, taking care of other people's children. But neglecting her own children always struggling in poverty. Due to the absence of parental care, my younger brother was out in the streets causing trouble and ran away from home, often growing up as a truant. On the other hand, I became very introverted, who was wary of even anyone talking to media became a wallflower. I wasn't good at studying and since we were poor, going to college was out of any consideration. However, I graduated from all-girls technician high school and luckily got hired at a bank. At that time, working for a bank was considered a prestigious job equivalent to a government job. So I was very proud of myself for the first time in my life. I met my husband at work. I worked as a bank clerk. While my husband worked as a loan officer, he wasn't an outgoing person, but he had a strong sense of responsibility for which I felt attracted to him. Since I was very shy about approaching, so me to my husband wasn't easy. I only admired him in the distance. However, one day I got a lucky chance to meet his mother. I was working at the window, serving customers as usual. A middle-aged woman came up, and I served her kindly. She happened to be the mother of the man I had a crush on. She seemed to like my service, and she often sought after me whenever she came to the bank. However, I was the only one who didn't know who she was. After a month. She said she wanted to treat me to lunch. I politely declined because the bank's policy forbids a personal meeting with bank customers. Then she revealed herself as a mother of assistant manager Jason. Will you please have lunch with my son? Just once. When she said that, I was so shocked. I got goosebumps. That's how I got to go out to eat with the man I secretly admired. After that day, we naturally became close, and his mother asked me to date her son formally. Internally, I wanted to say yes right away, but I didn't want to be caught being so willing. I asked for time to think it over. A few days later, I said I would, and that's how our relationship started. Since I had received my mother-in-law's approval in advance, a relationship growing toward our marriage was not that difficult. After dating for a while, we got married. After we got married, I continued to work for a while, but I quit my job when I got pregnant with our first child. People around me tried to talk me out of outright quitting a good job. But I made a bold decision because I wanted to raise my baby myself. 
Fortunately, my husband agreed and after the baby was born, I spent happy days as a full-time homemaker. However, something unexpected happened to my parents. If you like our story, subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon. My mother who had been the sole wage earner for the family announced a divorce as she no longer could endure it on her own. At that time my younger brother was preparing a shotgun wedding due to his girlfriend's surprising pregnancy. What broke the camel's back was my younger brother's added burden for his wedding that fell solely on my mom. My brother had no earnings as he had just been discharged from service. The problem was money. As an older sister, I couldn't help because my husband was the only one working, and raising a baby increased our household expenses. My dad was absolutely of no help when my mom was struggling for money. My dad just criticized my mom and said, Getting married is his own responsibility. His sister never asked for any handout when she got married. You are too soft on him. My mom answered to dad. Aren't you ashamed to say that when you are yourself, do not help out in this household? You should be the one who shouldn't ask me for any money. I got you the taxi to earn money. But why are you just going around and spending my money? I should know better than to ask. You're just playing around like some Casanova of the century. My parents had endless fights and eventually announced that they will divorce right after my younger brother's wedding. My brother accepted it as a matter of course, but it wasn't easy for me. On the other hand, I knew that my dad wouldn't change. So I didn't try to stop their divorce. Thus, my parents got divorced, and my mother took out the deposit from the lease to rent an apartment for my brother's newlywed abode. She used the balance to rent a studio for herself. I was worried about my mom being alone, and for a while I went by her place. However, my mom said that she now felt more at peace and told me just to concentrate on my own family. My dad left without a word after the divorce and the rest of us even changed our phone numbers in case he tried to call. Because it would only be about either money or his accident. That's how we went our separate ways. I had another daughter, and with two children, time just flew. I thought having four years of age difference would be good enough to handle, but still, they required all my attention with a lot of work. Fortunately, my husband was a strong backbone of the family, and I felt proud despite the hard work. Then one day my mom called me. She had been suffering from indigestion and took some antacids that put her in the emergency on an ambulance. She was diagnosed with stomach cancer. The cancer had spread to other organs already, so it was futile to have any surgeries. She passed away four months after she was diagnosed with the terminal cancer. I didn't have any good portrait photo of her, so I had to use the one in my mobile phone. As I sat at her funeral and looked at a photo tears kept flowing. I felt so sorry for my mom, who worked so hard day and night all her life, to take care of our family without any help from our dad. My husband said we should look for our dad before my mom's wake service but I boldly refused. I felt it was useless to look for him, who caused nothing but pain to our mom. My husband mumbled as if he understood, but he looked uneasy. I asked him if anything bothered him, 
but he denied it. On the second day of the wake service, my husband told my younger brother and me that we had no more guests coming, and asked us to go get some sleep, as he would be at watch for the wake service. My brother and I went into a small room attached to the funeral parlor. Since my mom's burial will be in the morning. The next day, the funeral was over after the burial. Then my daughter said that, late at night, someone came by to the wake service. I suddenly got a bad feeling and asked my husband if my dad had come last night. He denied it and said it was someone. He knew who had arrived late and left after leaving some money as a convalescence gift for the family. I still had doubts and asked my younger brother if he saw our dad's name on the money gift enveloped. My brother told me not to be so sensitive. Since he didn't see any signs of our dad on the visitor's book, nor any gift envelopes. Only then I realized that I was being too hard. Time passed, and we came back to our usual routine. My oldest son got drafted and went into military service, and I was nervous that he might get hurt while at the boot camp. On my way back home, after driving him to the train station, I felt empty and lonely. His twenty-one months of service seemed so long. When I got home, I saw a familiar taxi in front of our house. I wanted to say a word for trespassing and approach the taxi to find our dad inside. My dad got out of the taxi and he looked a lot different from before. He looked small with his hair now turned all gray. He smiled awkwardly at me. I was so shocked that I was speechless. I bluntly yelled at him, asking why he had come. But my husband stopped me and telling me to go inside to talk because of the neighbors. I had no choice but to let our father inside. Then would you believe what he said? From now on, I need to stay here for a while. Dad put his stuff on the floor and looked around our house, as if looking for a room to use. What are you saying? When you were younger you leached off our mother. And now you want to do that to me. For how long do you plan to suck the blood out of your family? I have no intention to have you live here. However my father just ignored me and continued to look around. Then he said, Is this Tom's room? I will use this room while it's vacant. Then he took us back to enter my son's room. That's when I blocked his way. How dare you go inside that room? Leave my house right now. I pushed my father out the door and stood in front of it to block him from coming in. However my husband ran over and pulled me toward the living room. Calm down. He said it's just temporary. How could I calm down? For an instant my husband looked suspicious. Honey are you hiding something from me? Have you been in contact with my dad behind my back? At my inquisition. My husband remained silent. Then he took me to our bedroom. He told me about an incident. That happened about five years ago. My husband had to call a taxi for his work. And it happened to be my father's taxi. Dad said to my husband that he had been worried about my mom, my younger brother and me. So they exchanged phone numbers. If it was five years ago, it was before my mom's funeral. 
I then realized why my husband had brought up my dad for the funeral, so I asked him if my dad had come to the funeral. My husband who had denied it then finally told me the truth. Even though my dad was worse than a stranger, but my husband felt obliged to let my dad know of my mom's funeral. Then my father had begged my husband to allow his last farewell to his wife. Even though he had been a bad husband, my husband couldn't say no and let my dad come by when we are asleep. When I heard that, I became furious. I ran over to my son's bedroom to find him snoring on the bed that I was ready to wake him up to kick him out of the house. When I noticed the wedding ring on his finger, that affected me that I couldn't bring myself to wake him up. Since he was already asleep, I decided to send him away in the morning. When I came out of the room, my daughter who was studying for the college exam complained about the noise as it broke her concentration on studying. I apologized and asked her to go inside to study. These days we have to thread carefully on waters due to our lovely sensitive kid preparing for college. I told myself to endure her hysteria until her SAT exam was over. The next morning my husband and daughter left. And just my dad and I remained in the house. Neither of us spoke. After I finished doing the dishes, I went to my son's room and told my dad, I don't want to fight with you, so just leave now. Even if you stake yourself out here, I have no money to give you. Did I ask you for money? Why are you bringing out money, just like your mother? I didn't come to get money out of you. Why is it that you hate me so much? I could understand. If it was your brother. Since I yelled at him so much for getting into trouble and spanked him. But didn't you and I got along well enough? It was true. I had gotten along well enough without any clashes between my dad and me. However daughters usually side with their mothers. Making life hard for my mom made it difficult for me to accept our dad. How could I like you when I witnessed how our mom suffered because of you? What did you do? When our mom was working herself to death. As the head of the household, have you ever once tried to earn a living to provide for your family? Mom was the one who worked night and day, worried about money and ended up dead. Why did you even marry mom if you were going to ignore us? Because I feel so sorry for my mom, I could never accept you. I poured my heart out all my pent-up grudges against him. Then my dad seemed shocked and couldn't say a word. I stomped out of my son's room spitefully. I slammed my bedroom door. I felt uneasy however. Even though I screamed out all the words. I wanted to say all along why it wouldn't. After all he was my father, thus why did he have to come and make me get all upset? I even blamed my dad for my anger. When my husband returned from work, we had dinner in silence. Because of my dad, I lost my appetite and felt uncomfortable. So I got up first and made some snacks for my daughter, who'd return home from studying late at 10 p.m. In the meantime, my husband was asking my dad for a favor. 
My husband asked my dad to pick up my daughter from school at 10 p.m. each night. I got upset at my husband and said, You know I dislike it so why are you doing that? Stop it since I am up to my neck right now. Then my husband explained that. He was doing it for our daughter's sake. My husband was concerned about what our daughter would think. Seeing me the way I behaved toward my father. In other words I was being a bad example for a daughter. Then he added that. The way I act overly protective towards our children were the result of my emotional problem of attachment issues. He told me that my behavior caused bad moods. And begged me to be civil to my dad. What attachment issues? That's right I grew up without any love from my parents. And that's why still do you have to say it so bluntly to my face. Do you feel good now? My husband said. It was impossible to communicate with me. And got up from the table. I felt he was being so unfair that I teared up. Then I heard the front door close. When I looked at the watch it was 9.40. My dad must have gone out to pick up my daughter. As my husband had asked him. Soon my dad and my daughter returned laughing. I stared at them frowning. Then my dad asked me if I had a fight with my husband. I was dumbfounded and couldn't say anything. Did any realize who caused all this? I didn't know whether he really didn't know. Or he was pretending that he didn't know. I couldn't stand it any longer. I went into my son's room. And packed up my father's stuff and threw it outside. The front door yelling to get out of my house. Then I went back to my room. And cried myself to sleep under the covers in bed. My dad came even though I told him I didn't want him. And made me out to be the bad person. I woke up earlier than usual the next day. I felt lighter after crying. When I saw my husband asleep next to me. I recalled the incident the day before. To be honest I felt guilty. When my husband brought up the word attachment issues. I had married my husband because I didn't want to live like my mom. Who only suffered from having an incompetent husband and wanted to raise our children full of love. Unlike my brother and me. However it was just my problem. I actually did not consider my husband's or my children's point of view. I thought I should apologize to my dad. For my daughter's sake. I would never expect that my children treat me nice. When I wasn't nice to my own parents. So I opened my son's bedroom door quietly. But my father had left already. Leaving behind a letter in an old notebook. The letter was written as. Dear my beloved daughter Diane, I am sorry for barging and causing trouble. You made me realize what an incompetent head of the household I was. For your mom and to you. It's late but please accept my apology. However I hope you will believe this. So I leave it with this letter. If anyone asked me, when was the happiest time in my life? I would not hesitate a second to say that. It was the day you were born. I was so happy to meet you the world's smallest angel. 
even if it cost me all my luck in my life. However, I am sorry for being an incompetent father. But I hope you realize that. In my heart I love you as any father. Please be happy. I wanted to say these words at least. My heart ached as I read my father's letter. I wondered what I had done. Then my eyes caught the notebook that he had left. I wondered what was in it. When I opened it was filled with photos of me when I was young which were glued together. All of the photos of me smiling were the ones taken inside his taxi. Below the photos was what appeared to my father's handwriting. I finally met Diane's biological father. Fortunately it went well, I got his promise that he will never appear to Diane and Diane's mother. How hard did I run around trying to find him to obtain his promise? Now I can face my family in peace. I had a birth father. I couldn't believe it, no one in my family had ever told me. I was stunned to read that my father had been trying to find my biological father. I choked up from learning that, all this time despite getting all kinds of glares and contempt from us, he had been running around the country in his taxi on my behalf. I panicked and shook my sleeping husband to wake him up. What's my dad's phone number, hurry up, and phone him and ask him where he is. He has left please hurry. My husband hurriedly called my dad but he didn't answer the phone. My husband hit me on my sore spot, asking why I was looking for my dad, when I was dying to throw him out. I showed my husband the letter my dad left. Then my husband told me a story that he had kept hidden from me. In truth, your dad got the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. He told me not to tell you and your brother. He insisted that I remain in quietly, until he leave to meet with your mother. But I gave him our address, to come and live together, while he was still mentally sound. I told him that he shouldn't drive long, since he has the Alzheimer's disease, but he stubbornly left in his car. Since he said that, he would go to a facility before the disease got worse, by now he has probably arrived at a nursing home. I demanded my husband for his location. But my husband said that, he didn't know where the facility was located. My father had told him that he didn't want to show his last appearance. I immediately went to see my younger brother and said we had to find our father. Of course, my brother was baffled when I showed him dad's letter in the notebook, his eyes turned red and agreed. My brother and I checked all the nursing facility in the state and finally, after two months, found where our dad was. My whole family even our daughter wanted to see our dad. We arrived at our nursing facility located in a remote town. Inside the parking lot, we saw our dad's taxi parked. At that instant we saw our dad, taking a walk with a nurse's aide. When I saw our dad, I broke into tears that had been held back. However, opposite to my real feelings, sharp words got blurted out as if to prove that you are a big Casanova. If you were to go into the hide, why didn't you go to a place where we couldn't find you, how dare you stay in this comfortable place instead? I puckered my mouth. However, for the first time, we as father and daughter were able to look at each other and smile. Then I was able to hear about my biological father. 
My mom was dating someone before she got married. It was a guy who was born and grew up with my mom in the same neighborhood. My mom loved him dearly, but she was just a one-night stand for the guy when my mom found out she was pregnant. She told the guy, but he skipped town that night. When my grandfather found out about this maternal, he rushed to find a man to marry my mom. And she was forced to get married because she had the baby. Only after eight months people called me the premature baby. My dad found out that I was not his daughter when my mom had me after eight months. It was because he did not consummate the marriage until three months after the wedding. My dad thought that my mom would at least ask for forgiveness. However, my mother said nothing to admit that she was pregnant before she got married. That fact drove my dad away from home. It was because he became angry whenever he saw my mom. He thought of getting a divorce, but when he saw me, he couldn't. That's how he had come to accept me as his daughter. I apologized to my dad. I told him that he could punish me for all the wrongs I had done while living together and that my daughter really missed him. I begged him to come with us. He would not budge until I mentioned my daughter and he started to pack his bags. I guess this is why we say that everyone loves children. I was finally able to live with my dad. It will be a lie to say it wasn't a bit awkward. We had been part too long. My dad would go in his old taxi every night to pick up my daughter. Of course, I was the one driving. We also drove around to eat out at famous restaurants with our whole family in his taxi on weekends. Meanwhile, my dad's memory deteriorated fast day by day and he forgot how to drive. He only recognized me in the photos, not the daughter in front of him. He was ready to say goodbye to us. In the end he got readmitted to the nursing home and passed away in his sleep after six months. He had a slight smile on his face and looked as if he was asleep. We buried him next to our mother's grave even though he seemed a philanderer. He was a caring husband who loved our mother more than anyone else. I wish that our mom would finally realize that now. My dad's old taxi with history is now in my brother's parking lot. My younger brother insisted on it. He said that he sits in the taxi whenever he thinks of his childhood. Now that I'm talking about it, I plan to go to my brother's to sit in the taxi too. I miss my dad more than ever today. Dear Dad, thank you so much for your embracing our family with your love. Please don't try to carry the burden alone and rest in peace. I believe all the parents in this world are truly amazing. Thank you for listening to my story. Please cheer for me and write your comments of wisdom in the comments section. Pressing subscription and like is a big help to me. I hope your day is filled with great fortune. If you like our story, subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon.